It's time now for the political analysis of Fromm and Fuller. Al Fromm, former political advisor to President Bill Clinton, and Craig Fuller, former political advisor to both Presidents Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Good morning, all. Al, we've been talking uh, for several months about how Biden should be using the economy uh, to help his presidential campaign coming up because it's it's a very healthy economy at this point. I think even Republicans are accepting that. But now it's giving a lot of oxygen to the, the crisis at the border, as they say. This is starting to resonate. This is becoming a, a primary campaign issue. And uh, I wonder if you could give us your thoughts about how Joe Biden is handling this now and how he could possibly use this um, effectively in the campaign and uh, the same thing for the Republicans. Well, there's no question that we have a crisis at the border and it's a problem for Joe Biden. Uh, the the uh, immigration problem has been a problem uh, for decades and both parties like to talk about it and neither party likes to do anything about it. Craig was in the White House the last time we signed a major immigration bill because uh, Ronald Reagan signed it in 1986. Uh, look, uh, he, Polls indicate that uh, the immigration bill helps the Republicans uh, now that it looks like there uh, is a possibility of a bipartisan uh, solution uh, that gives the Republicans most of what they want in the Senate. Trump is trying to torpedo it because he thinks it'll hurt. Uh, he wants the issue. He doesn't want a solution to the problem. So I think uh, basically Biden has said if uh, this bill passes, he'll uh, close the border. Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, uh, I think it's going to make a lot of noise. But just like his cur Trump's caravans in 2018 and 2020, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Hmm. The deal really is when Trump is on the ballot, I mean, a, nor a normal presidential election, you, uh, an issue like uh, immigration may, may, may be important because it'd be, an, uh, it'd be a uh, referendum on the incumbent. But with Trump on the ballot, it's a whole different deal. They, uh, he has to make himself the issue, and, and, and the election rapidly becomes uh, a referendum on Trump. Yeah. To be honest with you, uh, I don't see how he could win it. I know the polls show that he has a lead now. Uh, and uh, uh, But I just do not believe that if a year of weeks like last week for Donald Trump uh, are going to have... Uh, the American people wanting a president who is uh, anything like Donald Trump. You know, uh, I might be like the boy who cried wolf, but I think eventually the wolf's going to come. Uh, think about last week. Uh, uh, in the last two weeks, he has this incredible meltdown uh, because Nikki Haley ran a closer race than he wanted in, uh, in New Hampshire and looked like an absolute madman on national television. Uh, he uh, had the judgment of $83 million in damages against him by a jury, not by a judge, but by a jury for uh, sexual abuse and then continually, continuously uh, and continuing to, uh, to defame the victim. Uh, and, uh, you know, this week... Uh, the judge is likely to impose a, uh, a damages of three, four hundred million dollars because of a fraud determination that has already been made by the court. And don't forget, just to reinforce that, his chief financial officer has also has already served his time in uh, in prison uh, for tax evasion. Uh, and this is going to happen every week. It's not going to get better. Today, Nikki Haley has gone on the air, I think. I think he's, she's going on the air today. Maybe she went on yesterday with uh, uh, a, a new series of ads called Grumpy Old Men. That's going to make him even madder. I think uh, he doesn't have a complete melt, meltdown or mental uh, breakdown if he doesn't continue to show signs of dementia. Uh, 
uh, you know, and he does win the Republican nomination, which is probably likely. Uh, uh, all of this stuff will energize his base, but his base is really a small part of the general electorate. It may be a big part of what's left of the Republican primary electorate, but it's a small part of the general electorate. Uh, and uh, you get a sense of that. I mean, I watched the Sunday shows in uh, uh, North Carolina Governor Burgum, who had been a ra in the race, now a surrogate for Trump. I mean, I would not like to have been in, in his position when he had the answer for Trump's conduct. He just couldn't do it. Uh, to even Tim Scott, you know, tries to dance on the head of a pin, but that doesn't work. Uh, yesterday we had, and this has uh, impact in, in a number of ways. Uh, yesterday uh, we had the filings for the funding in the first quarter. Uh, and Trump spent 10 times as much on legal uh, fees, taking money from ordinary people to pay for his legal fees, uh, as he has cash in, uh, on hand in his uh, main pack. I mean, basically, they've spent themselves dry uh, on uh, legal fees and I'm sure a lot of other stuff that wouldn't necessarily uh, 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 pass muster. Look, the key to Trump's vote, and, it, it, and there's a poll out in South Carolina which shows this again uh, uh, in South Carolina. The key to Trump's vote is election deniers. And that's a, you know, uh, a major part of the electorate in Republican primaries, but it's a very small part in the general election. And we saw what happened in 2022 to all of the election deniers that Trump endorsed. The elections were close, but they all lost. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I just think uh, it brings me back to where I was last week. Uh, Trump is in a position where he can't, he's going to be the issue and he can't win a majority of the vote. I mean, he's going to lose a two way race. Uh, that doesn't mean Joe Biden's a strong candidate because he's not. But as Biden says, he's not running against uh, uh, the almighty. He's running against the alternative. And sometimes the other guy wins because the first guy is so bad. And that's the that's Trump's that essentially is Trump's problem. And so where I where I came out last week and which I think is important, and I know some of our viewers uh, took objection to this and uh, in, in, I think in the Chestertown spa, uh, but uh, Trump's only chance to me is if there are third party candidates muttering the water. And I think the, the Trump campaign is going to press for that. Uh, we got an indication of that yesterday in the filing. Timothy Mellon, big bank and family gave $15 million to Trump, okay? He also gave $15 million to RFK Jr. in the last year. I mean, uh, and uh, so I think uh, what you're really going to see is uh, Trump continue to deteriorate, uh, making it harder and harder for reasonable people to support him in a general election. But he does have a hardcore base, and I think you're going to see all of his campaign operatives from jail or out uh, pushing hard to promote third party candidates to try to split the anti-Trump vote in hope that, like in 2016, he can sneak through uh, in a few or in enough of the swing states uh, to win in the Electoral College, even though I don't think he would even get a plurality, he would ever even get a plurality of the general election vote. Craig, uh, Al kind of gets the indication that immigration will not be a deterrent for uh, Joe Biden election if he's running against uh, former President Trump. What's your thoughts? I, well, I do want to talk <clears throat> about immigration, although I want, I'll pick up where Al kind of left off, which I think at the height of the craziness was Donald Trump claiming he's more popular than Taylor Swift. I mean, you know, what is that all about? Also claiming that he should have been on the cover of Time magazine, not Taylor Swift. I mean, this is a person who is coming apart in front of us. I mean, he's he's delusional. He, there's nobody can be better than him, more popular than him. 
more love than him. Um, I don't know. The, the politics is is going to be a rough place for him because he's going to find out that uh, I think, as Al points out, that when especially if he gets the nomination, that the general electorate is just not going to uh, follow him down to the bottom of the barrel that he seems to have put himself in. Having said that, let me talk about immigration for a minute. You know, so Hal's very generous about Ronald Reagan signing the last bill, and it was something that a lot of us worked on, and, uh, you know, it, it's a very serious issue. There's two things I that I will say, however, that I'll bet never come up in the course of the debate on the immigration bill. Number one, two out of three Americans actually favor immigration. It's about 63%, 68%, I'm sorry, 68% today, according to Gallup. Uh, that's down from 70%, but over 20 years, it's that's been the case. Now, of course, today there is a split between Republicans and Democrats on that, with more Democrats favoring it than Republicans, to be sure. But this is not something that Americans abhor. And you wouldn't know that by watching the news or seeing the border visits and that sort of thing. But but those are the facts. The second thing you won't hear, and this one really, I think, gets to the core of how this issue is being misused, is that study after study, one, one study saying since 1880, immigrants have created uh, or uh, committed less crime than native-born Americans. Let me say that again. The immigrants that come into this country are less likely to commit crimes than native-born Americans. And in a way, it's not so shocking. And if you think about these families who risk their lives, the lives of their children, to simply get a better life, where committing crime could mean deportation, that's not the path they go down. Furthermore, a Stanford study last year showed that many of these immigrants are living in you know, a household with uh, two parents, uh, kids. They're, made, they're earning money. They're, they're not susceptible to some of the, the urban issues, social issues that many native-born Americans are subject to, and therefore they create less crime. So you have to ask yourself, well, if Americans are generally for something, and today 68% of people favoring anything is astounding, and, the, and, the, and it's false, this is a false uh, you know, factoid that's put out there that we're somehow endangered by all these immigrants, how did we ever get where we are today? And I think the only explanation, in a way, is that is the the, the scene on the border is is horrible. Uh, it absolutely desperately needs to be addressed. Uh, but it's it's a it's a story and it's 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 pictures of something that um, you know kind of lead people to think things that are not necessarily true. It's also the case that. And here's where Trump has done a real disservice, not only the disservice of trying to throw sand in the gears of getting a, a, a solution in Congress, but he said, you know, these people, these people, these immigrants are, you know, committing crime and rapes, I mean, all kinds of horrible things. Well, that's the facts don't bear that out. But he says it. And I think that while Democrats, not Al, of course, but while many Democrats went off the rails talking about defunding police and somehow reduce try, thinking that there's a redu reduced concern about crime. They found out that didn't work so well. But immigration has become kind of a stocking horse for safety and security at home. And then you've got a governor in Texas who's shipping immigrants all over the country, particularly to New York. So even in New York, which is a long ways from the, from the border, they're experiencing something that is not you know, somehow destroying the economy of the state of New York but it's being used to create concerns about safety and security. And, and to the extent that happens, um, it's kind of a, a, a safety, security, law enforcement type of issue. And that does have resonance in, in some of these races. So I suspect we'll see more of it. It's also the case that, um, at least in one of the surveys I saw recently, Trump gets credit for being better able to handle the immigration issue than Biden. And so that makes Trump want to use this issue more and more. As for what's going to happen in the Congress, uh, I, I'm a little skeptical. Also, I, I you know, first of all, uh, there there's a bill in the Senate that's been negotiated that would pass today if they brought it to the floor for a vote, but they won't bring it to the floor for a vote unless unless they can get half of the Republicans in the Senate to agree to it, and that's the stumbling block because 
Um, they need 60 votes. Um, and, and so try as they might to get a resolution, they're still short of getting that uh, majority of Republicans in the Senate to go along with this. Maybe they'll get there. But if they get there, the Republican Speaker in the House says the bill's dead on arrival. Certainly, you know, it's possible, I suppose, he could shape, uh, or the Republicans in the House could shape their own measure. But then it has to go to conference, and then it has to go back to the Senate and the House. Are we going to get that done in an election year when some people want to use this issue, unfortunately, uh, to, you know, do combat? Um, I don't know. It seems kind of like a slim chance to me. At the very end of the day, and I, I, I'm kind of where Al is, I don't think immigration is going to be the an issue in a general election that moves that many voters one way or another. It could. It could make a difference in some key states, Arizona being one of them, uh, where you could have the fear of what's seen on television impacting impacting voters in a general election. But I think uh, the issues we've talked about before, uh, the economy, how people you know what people relate to, um, it, it will be will be far more important. And I suspect that at the end of this year we'll still have the problem. We'll still have a majority of Americans supporting immigration, and we'll still have elected officials searching for an answer. And on that note, I would say whoever is elected president, what I wish they would do, and this is an old Washington ploy, but I wish they would get wise people, form a commission. If Even if they can't find a resolution, and I do think at least we should start with a common base of, of facts, and the facts got lost a long time ago in this debate, in my opinion. Well, I also want to bring up the fact that uh, this immigration issue is now impacting foreign affairs. I mean, Ukraine is being held hostage by this immigration negotiation. Um, I mean, there are some side effects already being seen here. I, I think that it, it is true that uh, House Republicans are holding the immigration or, or, or the Ukraine and Israel aid hostage in a sense. Uh, to uh, the immigration issue. Uh, but if it wasn't an immigration, they'd find another reason to do that. Uh, I don't I don't think I think immigration is just a handy and uh, they think a politically useful tactic for doing it. Uh, I saw in the in the post this morning, I think, uh, or in the uh, in the Times, one of them that uh, there's now talk about separating Ukraine aid uh, and trying to ram it through uh, uh, separately. But I want to go back to what Craig said, because what he said is really really important. We're a nation of immigrants. I mean, my father was an immigrant. Nikki Haley could be the president of the United States. Her parents were immigrants. Immigrants contribute an awful lot to this country. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but one of the reasons uh, that our economy is so vibrant, that our economy is the best in the world, is because of the contribution of immigrants to our economy. Go out to Silicon Valley and see who uh, the, uh, the great entrepreneurs are. Uh, I mean, so immigrants really have contributed a lot uh, to our country. What's, what, what the Republicans are doing and what Trump really has done is he has, he has decided to use immigration and his claims about Mexican rapists and all that as a as a way to really raise the underlying issue in the country, which is the de changing demography and nature of the country. Uh, he wants he 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 basically, you know, for all of my almost all of my lifetime, and it's been a long one, uh, the, we talked about e pluribus unum, from many to one. Uh, Trump wants to keep us divided, and he wants to keep us divided because, and he wants he wants an enemy, and the enemy are immigrants, because as we've discussed many times, this country is rapidly changing. It is no longer, and will not for long be a white. Christian majority uh, country where uh, 
uh, you know, white Christian, basically men run the country. Uh, the demography is changing. Uh, we're, we're becoming something uh, that no other country really has done, which is a multi-racial, multi-cultural democracy. And uh, what Trump is, is trying to be an obstacle to that. And it's sort of, he's sort of evidence of the pain that you have to go through to make this kind of fundamental change in the country. But I'm always reminded when, uh, you know, 2024, in addition to being a presidential year, it's going to be an Olympic year. And uh, you'll see the big march of all the countries onto the, you know, into the Olympics. And I guess it's in Paris. And, uh, you know, as they say, as the commentators often say, the, you know, the Germans look like Germans, the Japanese look like Japan, Japanese, the Chinese look like Chinese, the Indians look like Indian, uh, and on and on. And the United States looks like all of them. And that's why we're the greatest country in the world. Greg, you have the last word. I don't know. I think that was a pretty good last word. I, you know, I agree. I, and as I was talking, I was thinking, you know, I don't, Trump really never likes a fair fight. He always wants to, you know, take on somebody is, who's weaker and, and uh, we figures with money and more lawyers, he can beat them. He's not being, he's not proving very successful at that. Um, with the immigration issue, though, it really is in many ways an unfair fight because when you think of what immigrants have, you know, are accomplishing today in this country, let alone over decades and decades, and and you listen to some of the facts that, you know, I recited and you, you just you just wonder why are why are they under attack so much? And I got to thinking, but when was the last time you heard somebody stand up and represent the immigrants? You know, who's out there telling their story? Who's out there defending um, people who contribute to our economy and to the welfare of their kids and all that? It, it's a it really is an unfair fight, which is a perfect one for for Donald Trump to weigh in on and see if he can uh, take advantage of. Um, you ask about tying it to Ukraine. I thought I, I, I'm guessing that there are some uh, strategists on Capitol Hill that wonder about the wisdom of that. It's a tried and true technique to find something that you really have to do and tie something controversial to it. And it turns out, of course, they put two controversial things together and probably decrease the odds of getting either of them accomplished, which which uh, says a lot about the strategist, I guess, on Capitol Hill. Um, I do. I, I, ho I hope there's progress on both. I'd say there's probably more likelihood that we find a way to support uh, Ukraine and, and the situation in the Middle East than we do solving the immigration issue. I think that's probably an issue for either Biden's second term or for the new administration of a, of a new president. But it's... Um, it's important, and uh, I, I do hope as we go through this debate, uh, we can reflect a little bit more on what immigrants have achieved in this country. Well, we have to leave it there. Al Fromm, Craig Fuller, thank you so much indeed. We will see you next week.